Okay, this is for my math teacher colleagues. Uh, I ran across this book early in my career, a book by Harold Jacobs, Mathematics, a Human Endeavor, and it really changed the way I taught. And I believe that mathematics is a human endeavor, and I try to show that in all my classes. I start at the first day of class with this. Let me show you. I write the sequence of odd numbers up here, the sequence of squares, and then I ask my students, what number do you think comes next in this sequence? And of course, they will say, seven. What number after that? They'll say nine. So on and so forth. So I point out that when they're doing that, when they're in that state of mind where they're looking for a pattern in these first three numbers and trying to extend that, they're doing mathematics. And it's actually a pleasant experience. When you're in that state of mind, you don't notice yourself as being separate from your surroundings. You don't notice time go going by. It's a different sort of state of mind, and it's a pleasant experience. And as human beings, we almost can't help it. We see the first three numbers in a sequence, and we start thinking, what's the next number? Then I show them the sequence of squares, okay? One, four, nine. I ask them what number comes next in the sequence. A little harder for them. 16. Next number after that, 25. Then they've got it. And I point out again, when they're in that state of mind, they're looking for a pattern in these first three numbers and trying to extend that pattern. They're doing mathematics. It's a pleasant experience. So I think it's important for them to see me actually write these things on the board. I, when I give a presentation at a math conference or that, it'll be a PowerPoint presentation, something like that. But when I'm actually in the classroom, I think it's important that stu students see me work problems. I also think it's important that I look at their work too, so that I can correct the form of their work so that we're all in sync with how we present mathematics. So I do this little thing the first day of class, and after I'm done with it, I say, one of the things that drew me to mathematics in the first place was when I would see two seemingly unrelated things and find out that they were actually very closely connected. And it turns out that the sequence of odd numbers and the sequence of squares are very closely connected. And so I give them a couple days to think about that. Sometimes I make it an extra credit assignment. Um, there's a lot of ways I approach it, but I, I set the, the stage for this and tell them that it's something I like about mathematics and that there is a relationship between those two sequences of numbers, and I'll show it to them later. So later on then, a couple days later, I'll come into class and say, look, I found a book here, the book of squares by the mathematician Fibonacci, and in the first paragraph in the introduction to his book, he shows the relationship between the sequence of odd numbers and the sequence of squares. Let me read it to you. I thought about the origin of all square numbers and discovered that they arise out of the increasing sequence of odd numbers. For the unity is an odd number, and from it is made the first square, namely 1. To this unity is added 3, making the second square, namely 4. If to the sum is added a third odd number, namely 5, the third square is created. And thus, sums of consecutive odd numbers and a sequence of squares always arise together in order. So one thing I like about this is the way he starts this paragraph. He says, I thought about the origin of all square numbers and discovered they arise out of the increasing sequence of odd numbers. So he's admitting that he was just sitting around thinking about mathematics. Mathematics is a human endeavor. Human beings are the people that create this mathematics. And Fibonacci was uh, thinking about these two sequences of numbers. So then I get to show my students here, this is what Fibonacci is talking about. He says the first square and the first odd number are the same. Then he says if to this odd number you add the second odd number, 3, you get the second square, 4. If to that uh, sum you add the third odd number, namely 5, you get 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is 9, you get the third square. And so by inductive reasoning, we can say, look, if we wanted to look at this pattern right here, 1, 4, 9, without even adding the numbers, we could say the next one is 16. Then we could check our work, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. Sure enough, that comes out to be 16. So this is what Fibonacci is saying in the introduction to his book. And the interesting thing about that, and I tell this to my students, look, Fibonacci's book of squares, it's all written in paragraph form. The equal sign isn't invented for hundreds of years. So people that wrote these books back in the year 1250, and that's when this book was published, everything is in paragraph form. 
So can you imagine doing mathematics uh, when it's all in paragraph form and none of the symbols that we have? So it gives me a chance to point out that, look, I like the way mathematics looks on a page. I think this is an attractive diagram right here, and I really like this relationship. If you were to add the first five odd numbers, you get the fifth square. The first six odd numbers, you get the sixth square, so on and so forth like that. So it's a chance for me to tell my students that this is one of the things that drew me to mathematics in the first place. I see a relationship like this and I think to myself, you know what, everything's okay. So this also sets the stage for a whole bunch of other things that are going to come up in the semester. I've set the stage for the Fibonacci sequence. I could show connections between it, Pascal's triangle, and a lot of other things. So I think mathematics is a human endeavor. I think it's important that my students see me actually working problems on the whiteboard or whatever that it's not all a PowerPoint presentation, it's not all electronic homework. I think it's important that I look at their work, and I think it's important that we show these things right here, which gives us a connection between each other, me and my students, and all of them with each other, and a connection with people that lived in the past. So, one more thing before I stop this. I've showed them the Book of Squares by Fibonacci. Now I can go to the prologue where he talks about why he wrote this book, and here's what he has to say towards the end. I've come to request indulgence if in any place it contains something more or less than right or necessary. For to remember everything and be mistaken in nothing is divine rather than human, and no one is exempt from fault. So what Fibonacci is saying is that he may have made a mistake somewhere in this book. Fibonacci knew what you and I know is that human beings make mistakes. So it's a good thing to be able to point out at the beginning of these classes that um, you're going to make mistakes in this class and in fact your mistakes sometimes are the guideposts that are going to tell you how to be successful in this class, especially if you're making the same mistake over and over again. Now we've got a connection with Fibonacci. Mathematics is a human experience and Fibonacci is telling us what we already know. Human beings make mistakes. I make these videos and then I come in the next day and look at them and then I realize I should have said this or I should have said that and sometimes I redo the video. I think in this case what I'm going to do is just go back and summarize some of the things that we did. So first of all the main point here is that mathematics is a human endeavor. Just like Harold Jacobs says in the uh, title of his textbook, mathematics is a human endeavor. It's something that human beings do and I want to convey that to my students. So I think it's important that students watch actual human beings work problems on a whiteboard, chalkboard, uh, overhead projector, whatever it is. I think it's interesting to watch people do mathematics. I always liked that when I was a student, the different math teachers that I had, how they went about things. I also think it's very important that we look at our students' written work so that we can adjust their form and that to make their work more readable and to make it look more like the kind of work that we show. So it's a human endeavor right here, and it's important to watch people work problems. It's important to look at your students' work. Um, as you can see from going through all of this right here, mathematics also connects us with each other. This little statement right here, once we realize what that means and what the significance is and how those things are related, we're connected to each other. We know that that other person knows the same thing, and it actually connects us to Fibonacci. When we read Fibonacci's book, we, he tells us what he was thinking. It's in paragraph form. This is what he was thinking. So in a way, that mathematics um, is a connection that we have that will travel through time in between us and Fibonacci. We know what he was thinking. It's written down like this. I want to point out that um, I do these things five minutes at a time. I reserve five minutes of every class to do these things. This first part right here is five minutes of the first class. This right here is five minutes of another class later on. And I use those five minute segments to bring in all the things that I think are interesting in and around mathematics. Okay, and then one last thing. Mathematics, it's not an electronic endeavor. The, that's really the reason I made this video because I see all of these things happening in mathematics right now with electronic homework systems, electronic delivery systems, uh, doing mathematics on the computer. Mathematics is not an electronic endeavor, not yet that is, maybe sometime in the future it will be, but for right now it's a human endeavor and we need to make sure that um, 
We give our students a chance to watch other people work problems. We check their work. We point out the connections that mathematics makes between human beings because mathematics is a human endeavor, not an electronic endeavor just yet. So I'm worried that this is becoming too important and we're losing this idea that it's human beings that do mathematics, not computers.